Rudy is quite a character. He's a brilliant scientist, of course. Really smart. He's not maybe the most political correct person. He's a fantastic speaker. Good mentor. Of course, clever. Rigorous. And he's much liked. I think the big, the big talent uh, that you then need to have is to recognize when luck occurs and to pick it up and to go on with it. Man can only learn by proceeding from the known to the unknown. The quotation is from the French physiologist Claude Bernard and dates back to 1865 in the introduction to his book The Study of Experimental Medicine. This quotation comes close to summing up Professor Rudolf Zechner's work. With his teams in Graz, Austria, he discovered a new enzyme named adipose triglyceride lipase, ATGL, that degrades fat. It was indeed a new discovery, but above all, it formally demonstrated that in this field, conventional scientific wisdom was in error. I was working on, on one of these fat catabolizing enzymes, and one day this guy, Günther Hemmerle, comes into my laboratory and says, you know, Professor, I, just, I, I want to knock out a gene in the mouse. I don't care which gene it is. Uh, I just want to learn this technique. And so we decided, since we had knocked out already the lipoprotein lipase gene, uh, that we would go for this one and only intracellular uh, lipase that is responsible uh, for the digestion of fat. We expected, you know, when we knock out this gene that the animals would become very obese, but then the opposite happened. And that was clear uh, that this enzyme that has been around for many, many decades as the rate-limiting enzyme for fat digestion uh, is not the correct one, and this made this discovery then in 2004 uh, on ATGL, on adipose triglyceride lipase. We're aware that it's an important discovery but uh, we, of course, didn't know all the implications it had afterwards. First, we, of course, thought that we have found a potent drug target uh, to, to, to go about obesity or diabetes, uh, but then we had to learn that ATGL is probably too strong to be a good drug target. We also found then an activator of ATGL, CGI58. Without this activator, the enzyme is relatively inactive. So further on, it was found that human mutations in the genes for ATGL and CGI58 uh, cause a rare genetic disease. And there are two versions of it depending whether uh, you lack the enzyme ATGL or you lack the coactivator CGI58. So we were interested in the biochemical processes uh, to really show that in the mouse you have the same phenotype. Uh, more recent work now is, focuses more on how does this fat catabolism affect other processes uh, in the body. Understanding and managing disorders such as obesity, type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular diseases. These are just some of the applications for this discovery of the mechanism by which our organism degrades fats. It's a subject that has always interested Rudolf Techner, who built up and then carried on his career in his hometown as awareness of the importance of lipids metabolism continued to grow. When we started in lipid research, there was actually, this was a, a time when lipid research was unfashionable. In those days, it was much more important, you know, to clone genes, to study the regulation of transcription, to study the regulation of DNA replication uh, and all those things. And lipids were seen sort of a side product, although it was already then known that lipids are the basis of all cell membranes and intracellular membranes, so it's, it's clear lipids are very, very essential molecules, it was kind of seen a little bit of a, I guess, a slimy mess. <laughs> and that's why people didn't focus it. So it was easy in those, in those days to start, to meet people, to enter the field, and eventually this field exploded now in the last 10 years because of all these problems with metabolic diseases like obesity and comorbidities like diabetes or cancer. Uh, so that right now it's extremely uh, fashionable, which is good in one way, which is 
difficult for the young people because for them now to enter this field requires much more than when I entered the field when you know this was a small group of, of scientists worldwide that knew each other. Uh, now you know you go to these meetings and there are 2,000 people there and if you're a young postdoc how are you going to meet anybody? <laughs> In biosciences there is one big uh, place, Vienna, and compared to that Graz is small. And one of the exceptions is biosciences. This is probably due to Rudi, who uh, managed to focus a considerable fraction, not all, but a, a substantial fraction of the biosciences in Graz, not only at this university, but via collaborations also at the medical and technical universities, to focus that on lipid research. And that's brought visibility to this place. So Graz is now in the lipid field is visible. A member of the Austrian Academy of Sciences, Rudolf Zechner is professor of biochemistry at the Institute of Molecular Biosciences, University of Graz. It's a place to do research, but also somewhere to pass on his knowledge and experience to the upcoming generations of scientists. As a university, of course, teaching is uh, guided by science and research and this is very important for us and we also have study programs that really al are aligned to our research core areas. If you're a university professor, you are also obliged to teach a certain degree and, and you cannot get rid of this obligation totally. But even if I could, I would. Teaching is, is really a very, very important aspect of my professional life. It's important also for the students to be involved in research projects very early, that they can see how research uh, is uh, performed and uh, how you can evaluate the results. And so I think that there is a very close connection. Takes his um, passion for for biochemistry quite seriously and he hopes that he can really engage young people with that same kind of passion. He is able to explain the complicated things in a very simple way. So whenever he gives lectures or with, uh, probably also in student lectures, everybody can understand what might be much more complicated to, than it is. Uh, I'm considered as a relative tough teacher. My exams are not uh, that simple. But I think I'm, I'm, I'm quite well respected. People or students know that I do this wholeheartedly, that uh, teaching is an important part of me. And, you know, they can expect something from me, but I do expect something from them also. <laughs> Recently, Rudolf Techner and his team showed how the ATGL enzyme and its protein coactivator CGI58 contributed to the development of cachexia, the uncontrolled loss of weight affecting cancer patients. Yet another application deriving from the discovery of this Austrian researcher who remains determined to push back still further the boundaries of his knowledge. What is really amazing is that he more or less left his area now or went beyond his usual horizon to go on to cancer research and into cachexia. So we have already a close collaboration here in Graz with the Institute of Pathology of the Medical University. I mean, those are the cancer uh, experts and so everything is done in, in extremely close collaborations because I mean, we understand the biochemical part of lipid biology very well but we are really not cancer or cachexia experts so we need this other expertise. This is something I think which is special for a good scientist to be able to look beyond what you do every day and what you really come from because he's not a cancer specialist. I wouldn't be surprised if another excitement would come out within the next few years because he accomplished a great deal of grant money and that's very important. As a researcher he also is to me kind of an unconventional guy. He has questioned things that will long be considered uh, straight and easy and uh, he also I would say is not the one who systematically investigates one gene after the other, uh, but he's rather somebody who trusts his intuition and, uh, and searches really new pathways and paves new ways. All of his work has opened new areas. They've always been connected. Whatever it is that they discover next, I think they'll be quite fluid in moving into 
new areas that um, become apparent through their results. So I think we'll see some surprises in the next few years.